In this video, we're going to look at still another example of doing integration by parts. So in this one, we've got e to the minus theta cosine of 2 theta d theta that we're being asked to evaluate. Again, first try for any uh, antiderivative. If it's not an immediate elementary antiderivative that we're looking for, we should always think to try to use u substitution first before we go on to any other type of uh, technique of integration. In this case, however, u substitution is not going to do us any good for being able to evaluate the integral. Again, we have a product of two things, so we think that integration by parts is probably the way to go. Now, notice that neither of these two functions really is going to get simpler if you take the derivative. So it doesn't really matter which one you let u be and which one you let dv be. You'll get to the same spot if we do this twice. Ordinarily, though, I say just generally speaking, when you take derivative of e to a power, you always get e to that power back up again that pops up into the derivative. So in almost every integration by parts problem you do, you're probably going to want to let dv be the exponential part. There are some exceptions. You can certainly find problems where you need to let the exponential part be the u piece. But generally speaking, most cases, the exponential piece should be the dv, which is why I did that here. All right, so that'll make our u be cosine of 2 theta. Our dv will be e to the minus theta d theta. Take the derivative of the u, anti-differentiate the v. So we get du equals negative 2 sine 2 theta d theta for du, and we get uh, negative e to the negative theta for v. Apply our integration by parts formula. We take u times v. That'll give us negative e to the minus theta cosine 2 theta. And then minus the integral of v du. Well, notice when we take v times du, we get a positive 2 when we multiply those together. So we can pull the 2 out in front, and that's where the minus 2 piece is coming from. Remember, the minus sign comes from the formula. The 2 is coming from the fact that we've pulled out a constant of 2 on the integrand. Inside the integral, we've got e to the minus theta sine 2 theta d theta. This looks a lot like what we started with, except that we've got a sine for a cosine. So let's in apply integration by parts again. Let u equal sine 2 theta. du is 2 cosine 2 theta d theta. And again, antiderivative for e to the minus theta gives us a negative e to the minus theta, so that's what our v is again. Let's apply our integration by parts formula to the, the second integral that we looked at. For that second integral, u times v is going to be negative e to the minus theta sine 2 theta. The constant when you multiply v and du together will be on negative 2. Pull that in front out and pull that out in front of the integral that makes, changes that minus sign that would be there by the integration by parts formula to a plus sign. So that's where the plus 2 was coming from. And then we are left with for our integrand of e to the minus theta cosine 2 theta d theta. Keep in mind all of this was replacing this integral here. Back up a couple of steps. It had a minus 2 out in front so that's why we still have the minus 2 outside this parentheses. Let's distribute that minus 2 through. So now we have negative e to the negative theta cosine 2 theta plus 2 e to the negative theta sine 2 theta. Then we get a minus 4 e to the negative theta cosine 2 theta. And there would be a plus c here on the end if we were doing this antiderivative. If I actually had a final answer here, I would have a plus c. I'm putting plus c here on the end. Really, the plus c doesn't pop up here, and I'll explain why. Notice now we have an equation that's got the same integral on both sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this integral over to the left-hand side. So we add 4 integral of e to the minus theta cosine 2 theta d theta to the other side. That's where the 5 comes from. Now, <clears throat> these two things look like the same integral. But again, remember that for, these are general antiderivatives. Two antiderivatives for a function can differ by a constant, so that's where the plus c is coming in. That's why there's a plus c hanging out on the right-hand side. Again, I probably shouldn't have written it or typed it up, if you will, here uh, in those previous two steps, but it's just emphasizing that we really do have a plus c that will be on the end here at, uh, when we're finished. All right, so now we want to solve for the integral to get back to what we were starting with to try to figure out what the answer is. So divide both sides by 5 gives us a final answer of negative 1 fifth e to the negative theta cosine 2 theta plus 2 fifths e to the negative theta sine 2 theta. 
And then when we take the constant divided by 5, that's still an arbitrary constant, so I can leave it as just plus c.